Full stop. A full stop is used at the end of a sentence. It can also indicate an abbreviation. E dot G dot is the abbreviation for example. A full stop is always followed by a capital letter at the start of the next sentence. Some examples of a full stop used in a sentence include I visited my friend yesterday. They are my neighbours. As you can see in both of these examples, the full stop is at the end of the sentence. Anna and Stacy went shopping yesterday. They bought new shoes. In this example, we have two independent sentences with no conjunction, comma, or semicolon. Therefore, a full stop is required. Ali hadn't completed his homework. He thought it was due next week. In this example, try to think about where you would place the full stops and capital letter. So, here we have the full stop to mark the end of the first sentence and then a capital letter at the start of the next sentence. We also have a full stop at the end of the second sentence. Comma. A comma can be used to join two independent clauses a comma can also be used in a sentence containing a list. When the dependent clause comes before the independent clause, a comma is used to separate the two. A comma is also used in an adjective clause, before direct speech, and following a transition word. An example of a comma being used to join two independent clauses containing a conjunction is Jasmine wanted to buy sweets, but she didn't have enough money. An example of commas used in a sentence containing a list includes I bought apples, oranges, grapes and tomatoes. So this is a list of fruits, however, the list can contain anything, so it can be items, verbs, or even adjectives. So as long as you have a list in a sentence, then commas are required. Remember, a comma is not required just before the word and. An example of a comma used to separate dependent clause and independent clause include, because I missed the bus, I was late to school. Remember, the dependent clause doesn't make sense on its own, whereas the independent clause does make sense on its own. Because I missed the bus is the dependent clause. I was late to school is the independent clause. An example of commas used in an adjective clause is Anna who is a short woman, reached the books from the top shelf. An adjective clause just provides extra information in a sentence. The adjective clause provides extra information about Anna. An example of a comma used before a direct quote is Jane said, I want to go to the park. An example of a comma used following a transition word includes 
James forgot to finish his science homework. Therefore, he got into trouble. The transition word is therefore, and the comma comes after the transition word. Other examples of transition words include however, yet, but, etc. There are many more. Question mark. A question mark is used at the end of a question. For example, is she going to the park? What time will you arrive? Remember, an exclamation mark can be used with a question mark. For example, why would you do this to me? The exclamation mark indicates strong emotion and the question mark indicates a question is being asked. We can identify whether a sentence is a question or not because in a question, the subject and the verb are inverted. Generally, in a normal sentence, the subject comes first and then the verb. However, in a question, the verb comes first and then it's followed by the subject. Exclamation mark. An exclamation mark indicates strong emotion such as anger, fear, love, etc. It can also be used to indicate a command, for example, stop. Examples of a sentence with an exclamation mark include Ouch! That hurts! Don't do that. An exclamation mark can be used with a question mark. For example, why would you do this to me? Exclamation mark, question mark. In this example, the exclamation mark portrays strong emotion and the question mark indicates a question. Quotation marks are used with direct quotes. This can be direct speech or when quoting someone else's speech. Examples of this include Mrs Smith said, make sure you finish the homework by tomorrow. Get out of my room. An easy way to remember how to draw quotation marks is to remember them as 66 and 99. So the 66 goes at the start of the quote and the 99 goes at the end of the quote. That's all you need to know for quotation marks. It's very simple. Just remember when you are quoting something or someone, that you always begin the quote with a capital letter. Apostrophe. Apostrophes are used with contractions. To indicate possession, they are used for collective nouns and are used to indicate owners of a noun. Contractions are shortened versions of a word. For example, I didn't go to school. The apostrophe is used where the letter is missing. Did not becomes didn't. Another example is, come on, hurry up. Come on becomes come on. 
Contractions can be formal or informal. To indicate possession. An example of this is that Sam's house. That is a contraction of that is. Sam's indicates possession as the house belongs to Sam. Therefore we use apostrophe S. If the name already ends in an S, then you can just put an apostrophe after the S. For example, Thomas's cat is cute. Here, the name Thomas already ends with an S. Therefore, to indicate possession, we can just put the apostrophe. Another example is, James's car is red. James ends with an S. However, we can also indicate possession by adding apostrophe S. Both sentences are grammatically correct, therefore it's up to you which form you prefer to use. We generally use apostrophe followed by the S, however, just adding the apostrophe is also correct. It's important to make sure that you stick to one rule throughout your writing. Apostrophe used for collective nouns. Regular plural nouns generally end in an S, therefore we just add the apostrophe. For example, the form required both parents' signature. Irregular plural nouns generally don't end with an S, therefore we add apostrophe S. For example, the children's play area was very colourful. Apostrophe to indicate owners of a noun. So if more than one person are owners of the same noun, then the last name takes the possessive form. So we just add apostrophe S to that name. For example, Anna and Sam's house. We write this instead of Anna's and Sam's house. If the people own similar items but individually, then both names will take the possessive form. For example, Anna's and Sam's dogs. So in this example, they own separate items, so both names take the possessive form. Colon. A colon can be used to introduce an explanation to separate independent clauses, to introduce an example, to introduce a list in a sentence, and a colon can also be used before direct speech. An example of a colon used to introduce an explanation is, she had one problem. There was no way she could finish her homework in time. In this sentence, the general idea is given, followed by the colon, and then the specific explanation is given. The colon in this sentence can also be used to show emphasis. An example of a colon used to separate independent clauses is, they will not make it home in time, the roads are very icy. The colon is used instead of a semicolon between the independent clauses. The reason for this is because the second sentence explains the first sentence. So they will not make it home in time and the reason for this is because the roads are very icy. An example of a colon used to introduce an example is If she was going to make the cake, then she needed all the ingredients. For example, flour, butter, eggs and milk. An example of a colon being used to introduce a list in a sentence is I like to play all kinds of sports. Football, basketball, tennis and golf. Remember, when we have a list in a sentence, we always use a comma 
to separate the items in the list. An example of a colon used before direct quote is She shouted, get back to class. A comma can also be used before the direct quote. There's no difference whether you use a colon or a comma. However, make sure you remember to always start the quote with a capital letter. Semicolon. A semicolon is similar to a full stop, therefore instead of a full stop we can use a semicolon. However, generally we use a semicolon when two sentences are closely related. So, a semicolon is used to connect independent sentences that are related. For example, London is a famous city. There are many places to visit. Normally when joining two sentences together we use a conjunction. However, this is not necessary if we have a semicolon. If a conjunction is used to join the two sentences together, then depending on the type of conjunction, either a semicolon can be used or a comma. So, if the conjunctions are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, then we use a comma. If you use a conjunctive adverb, for example, however, therefore, meanwhile, nevertheless, then we use a semicolon. These are only a few examples of conjunctions and conjunctive adverbs. There are many, many more. So make sure you research this. For example, my birthday is tomorrow, therefore I expect lots of presents. The conjunctive adverb, therefore, is used, so a semicolon has been inserted just before the conjunctive adverb. A semicolon can also be used in a sentence containing a list. For example, I have been on holiday to Istanbul, Turkey, Rome, Italy, Athens, Greece and Paris, France. Another example is, at the circus we saw a clown juggling with swords, a lion who stood on a ball, a fire eater with flashing eyes and an eight-year-old acrobat. So, when a semicolon is used in a sentence containing a list, generally the items in the list are long or the list already contains internal punctuations, for example, commas. So in the first example, we have internal punctuation, commas, and in the second example, the list is very long. Each item has a long explanation. To summarise, a semicolon is used to connect independent sentences that are related and a semicolon is used to introduce a list in a sentence. Brackets. Brackets come in pairs and are used to add extra information to a sentence. This extra information can be a word, a phrase, or even an entire sentence. There are two types of brackets. The first type is parentheses. Parentheses are generally used to add extra information in the sentence. For example, Philip studied all day for the grammar test. I went to the museum with Becky. 
my best friend. The sentence should still make sense if the bracket element is removed. For example, if we remove all day, Philip studied for the grammar test. The sentence still makes sense. In the second example, if we remove the bracket element, we're left with, I went to the museum with Becky. So the sentence still makes sense. The second type of bracket is square brackets. Square brackets show that words have been added to a direct quotation. It may be necessary to use square brackets if you are providing extra information in order for a quote to make sense. For example, we went and had a brilliant time. This quote isn't very clear as there isn't much context. However, we can provide extra information using the square brackets. For example, we went to the theme park and had a brilliant time. If punctuation is required within the brackets, then this should be included before the closing bracket. If punctuation is required in the surrounding sentence, then place these outside the bracket. For example, after lunch, a tuna sandwich, Ali ate an apple. The comma belongs to the surrounding sentence, therefore after closing the bracket, we place the comma to show this. Ellipsis. These are three dots to show a mission or a pause in a sentence. A mission refers to something being left out. We can use ellipses when we want to miss out part of a quote. For example, if you've got a very long quote and you want to miss out or leave out the irrelevant parts, you can use ellipses to do this. Generally, we use ellipses in speech as this adds effect to the sentence. It can show a pause in speech or where the sentence trails off. We can use ellipses in informal and fictional writing. For example, um, I'm not sure. Sam, I'm very sorry. I hope you can forgive me. Hyphen. A hyphen is used to join words together. This includes hyphenated compound words, hyphens and numbers, hyphens with compound modifiers, hyphens with participles, and hyphens with prefixes. Hyphenated compound words. These are words with a hyphen between them. For example, mother-in-law, two-year-old. Hyphenated compound words tend to become closed over time, so they become one word. For example, fireman, notebook. Open compound words are made up of two nouns that represent a single idea. There's a space between the words, but no hyphen. For example, dinner table, living room. Hyphens and numbers. Numbers should have a hyphen between them when spelt out, especially if this is a two word number. For example, I am 21 years old. In other cases, when we use numbers as part of a compound noun, a hyphen should be used to connect them to the noun that follows. For example, the teacher gave a 30-minute lecture to the class. Hyphens are also used with fractions. For example, I need one-third of a pound of flour and two eggs. Hyphens with compound modifiers. A compound modifier is just two words that work together as one adjective. 
The hyphen is used to show the reader that the words work together to describe the noun. The noun generally comes after the adjective, however, if it comes before, then we leave the hyphen out. For example, the bread was impossible to eat because it was rock hard. So here, the noun comes before the adjective, so we leave the hyphen out. However, if we write the sentence as, the rock hard bread was impossible to eat, then we insert the hyphen. These same rules apply to participles. So, hyphens with participles. An example of present participle is, they are some beautiful looking flowers in the garden. An example of past participle is, a well-known poet will perform tonight. Hyphens with prefixes, for example, ex, co, pre, post, etc. So a prefix comes before the word and changes the meaning of the word. A hyphen is used with the prefix. For example, he was the ex-mayor of the town. She is my co-worker. N dash. The N dash is slightly longer in length than the hyphen and shorter than the M dash. This dash indicates a period of time, distance or a range of numbers. Think of it as to or through. For example, I had to reach pages 90 to 150 for my assignment. The opening hours are 9am to 3pm. She travelled from America to Europe. M dash. This dash adds emphasis to the sentence. The M dash can be used instead of round brackets, commas or colons. For example, she is scared of two things, heights and spiders. So in this sentence we have colons. However, instead we can write she is scared of two things, heights and spiders. Another example is, I went to the shop, but it was closed. In this sentence, we have a comma. Instead, we can write it as, I went to the shop, but it was closed. As you can see, the M dash has replaced the comma in this sentence. The sentences are the same, however, the M dash adds emphasis. Slash. Slash can be used to separate words in a sentence, to indicate or, to indicate connecting and conflicting ideas, to separate lines in a poem, play or song, to indicate a fraction, to indicate per in a measurement. It can be used in an abbreviation and the slash can be used to separate the day, month and year when writing the date. An example of a slash used to separate words in a sentence is I need to buy a new top and or return these shoes. An example of slash used to indicate or is the teacher noticed that a student had left his or her bag in class. A slash used to indicate connecting and conflicting ideas is I took part in the pro-life, pro-choice debate. An example of the slash used to separate 
lines in a poem, play or song is Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb, Mary had a little lamb. So as you can see, the slash is used to separate each sentence. Example of a slash used to indicate a fraction is half, one over two. An example of a slash used to indicate per in a measurement is he was paying £1,000 per month. A slash used in an abbreviation is she turned the AC on. AC is the abbreviation for air conditioning. An example of the slash used to separate the day, month and year is 13th of the 5th 2019. So this is generally how we write the date and the slash is used to separate out the day, month and year.